Hey guys, welcome back to Ridgeback Farm. Today behind me, I have the 1943 Farmall H. What we're going to be doing today is a little bit of diagnosing on it. Um, and hopefully the issue is, is easily solvable. And I'll kind of show you guys what, uh, what we'll be doing. So the issue at hand is going down the road in fifth gear. Uh, the tractor jumps out of fifth uh, going up a hill. When it's on flat land, it's not a problem, but going under, uh, going up a hill under load is, uh, it has a tendency to pop out sometimes. There are a few possible causes, um, kind of going in order of severity that could be causing this. The, one of the ones that could be an issue is, um, bent shift forks, which, uh, trying to shift on the fly, going from fourth to fifth. Oftentimes you can grind, bend the shift forks, um, very common with these. Uh, that is the most ideal issue uh, or, or root cause, if you will, for the gear popping out. <clears throat> what it requires us to do is take the belt pulley uh, housing the gearbox off, which there's uh, four bolts and then two uh, guide pins that will have to get removed. And allows us to access uh, in there and take a peek and what we'll be able to hopefully do is if that's the issue is get in there with a pry bar and kind of just bend them back into place a couple of other um, possible sources of the issue would be uh, main bearing wearing wearing out um, or the teeth being uh, ground down on the gears themselves and not being able to uh, to hold in place Hopefully and ideally the main, the, the issue here will be the, the shift forks being bent. We'll bend those back into place. If it is anything more severe, uh, it requires the transmission cover to come off. It's a little bit more in depth um, of, a, of a solution. We'll go ahead and, and start breaking into this. Um, we'll go ahead and take the bolts out and then see if we can't pry the uh, gearbox housing off. May require a, a rubber mallet to, to be able to do that and then uh, see what we get in there and uh, see what we find. So stay tuned and if you guys like the content, go ahead and, and hit that like button. Go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe and, and when you wanna know um, when I'm posting videos, go ahead and hit that bell and we'll uh, see what other kind of content we come up with. So stay tuned. All right, so the first thing that we've gotta do is we've got uh, two bolts on this side. Um, in addition to a threaded dowel, and this is just an alignment dowel. Um, to get that out, I've got a um, nut that we'll go ahead and thread on there. And then as you tighten the nut down, it pulls the dowel pin out enough to where you can you know, get it free by hand and uh, remove it from the hole. So this is just a 5 8 uh, bolt here. So we'll go ahead and, and remove these from the gearbox. And that'll, there's two on either side and we'll go through that. A little bit about this tractor. Uh, it's a 1943, as I, as I stated earlier. It was used primarily for tobacco. Uh, being in Connecticut, tobacco was a, a huge product for us um, back in the, the earlier you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and on. Um, and the farmer that used it uh, is actually a neighbor of mine. And the, uh, his grandfather actually put it away one year and unfortunately passed away. And it was sitting in a tobacco barn for uh, the better portion of 30 years and came up to me one day and asked if I had any interest in buying it and gave me a good deal on it and uh, got it home and started uh, kind of tinkering through it. And um, went through, did the big ticket item, so it didn't have a generator, so I converted it to a 12 volt system. Uh, it didn't have a starter, put one of those on there and uh, Put a new coil, new wiring all around, new lights, uh, cleaned out the tank. The tank was pretty bad. It had, I mean, 30 years of sitting with uh, gas in there was a pretty uh, pretty nasty smelling 
uh, molasses looking um, thing. And there you go. So that's uh, that's it for this side. We'll go around around the other side and uh, take out those bolts and see if we can't get her un unstuck. So got the and uh, back to the the tank. So I had the tank professionally cleaned out. Got rid of all of that gunk. Uh, it was they ended up having to cut into the, the behind the baffle and it was it was pretty nasty. So well worth it to have a clean tank. Um, and then uh, new carburetor, uh, new head. The engine was seized when I got it. Um, I was able to free the engine, but the head was was going to need a full rebuild. So I still have the head, but I was able to find a head off of a pulling tractor. Um, gentleman didn't want it anymore because he had gone to a Farmall 300 and ended up getting a, a distillate head and carb um, for, I don't know, 150 bucks and it was uh slapped them on and been using that ever since and ended up last year um the uh when i had unseized the engine i thought i may have um, a, a pretty bad rust ring or something like that and come to find out one of the pi uh, rings on the piston i was getting some pretty good blow by on a couple of the cylinders which i knew was a risk um and uh, ended up kind of smoking a little bit. And what I ended up doing was buying a rebuild kit from um, Steiner. And it was the Overbore, uh, basically the Super H uh, piston set. And uh, ended up doing an in-frame rebuild. So new pistons, new rings, um, rod bearings were fine. Um, and uh, so now it's basically a, a Super H engine. It gives me a little bit more power, nothing, you know, earth shattering, but it uh, definitely is noticeable on road gears and, you know, when you're pulling to have that extra little oomph behind it. And so this is the last alignment dowel. What I'll do is I'll just kind of unthread it a bit and slip the, uh, the wrench underneath it. Kind of push it up a little bit and then that'll should free it enough to where we uh, can just pull her out that's all it is is just a little uh, alignment pin you got a little bit of lube on there and it's uh, threaded so just a nice little easy way to get it out there so all right so we've got the bolts uh, undone from both sides now what I've got to do is you can see it from here I'll go ahead and try to show it um, there is the pulley engagement lever, uh, the engagement lever for the pulley system, I should say, that um, it's kind of, it's still attached, so it's in the way. And uh, what we'll have to do is go ahead and, and remove that. All right, so I've got the cotter pin out, and what we'll do is, you can see it in here, I'm just gonna kind of wiggle this out a little bit. I need you to uh, pry it out a little bit. Just to kind of get it out. Excuse the rooster. He's got quite a bit to say today. So you may hear him in the background. Um, and then, let's see. Come on. Just kind of pry up a little bit. And then just get it out of the hole. There we go. And then we'll... Uh, just get her off to the side a little bit if we can. I'm going to try to do this, see if I can't just turn this a little. There we go. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a mallet. We're going to whack this a couple times and see if we can get it out. I've got a pry bar too. I can get underneath the housing here and just kind of pry up. And, uh, hopefully it comes out and we can get into the uh, transmission housing. All right, so we are back. Um, I ended up getting the pulley housing off. Um, after a little bit of research, there are uh, the two bolts on either side of the housing that were on the top there did come off. Um, and after you remove those, it, uh, it pops right off. So what you'll see here is you can see the fifth gear um, shift fork there that handles the fourth and fifth uh, you know, transfers. So Right now, it's uh, the set's neutral there. It goes up to fourth there, 
and then um, back down to fifth. And what I noticed, and I don't know that this is the the only problem. Um, I think there is a little bit of wear on the on the gear there, um, but it, it it's got some slop in it. And when you're coming down here, uh, you can see that there's a little bit of slop. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm just going to pop it into uh, neutral. And we're going to go ahead and just bend back the uh, the shift fork slightly and um, just enough to kind of keep that engaged and get a little bit more life out of that. Don't need to really do too, too much. Um, just enough to kind of pop it back into, into place. All right, so I've got the belly pump back on. Uh, these are the two bolts that I was referencing earlier that I didn't realize required uh, removal. So got those in. Um, you do need to put those in first before you put the belly pump back in. We'll go ahead and put our alignment dowels in first. Just make sure that we've got those and you'll see that those will start to fall into place. Go around and do the other side. Perfect. All right, now we'll go ahead and install the associated bolts. Uh, longer ones are here at the front. Shorter ones are in the back. All right, so we've got the front cover plate back on. We'll go ahead and tight, tighten these bolts down. back together so I believe now we're going to uh, clean her up a little bit and then uh, take her for a drive all right guys so what we're going to do now is uh, go ahead and get this started up we're going to go ahead and take her down the road and see if she pops out of gear and what I'll do is I will continue um, filming up until uh, up through when if and when it pops out of gear and uh, if it does I'll just kind of jump to that point if it doesn't um, you know I'll speed through it and go from there <laughs> Work. 
Good to go. heard it there. So definitely uh, the ship forks were not the only cause of my my problem. So looks like uh, it will be a bungee cord or holding it down uh, from there. So we'll talk more about it when we get back to the house. All right. So you have, as you guys have probably seen, uh, that did not solve my problem. So it was not a ship fork, or at least the ship fork wasn't the only problem. So What's likely ahead of me is something a little bit more in-depth, uh, requiring the cover plate to be removed, which at this point is not something that I'm, I'm really looking to do. Um, if I do take it for a, a ride on the road in, in high gear, basically what I'll do is I'll either get a bungee cord, wrap it around, or I will just hold it down until I'm uh, on flat or ground or going downhill. Outside of that, the tractor runs great. Um, if you guys have any other you know suggestions that I may not have thought of that are a little bit more easy um, in terms of uh, you know rebuild, let me know. Not looking to uh, like I said break into this thing in depth doesn't mean I want it in the future, which is my hope. Um, I'd like to eventually restore everything, um, you know, new paint, all that stuff. But right now, um, kid on the way, just not uh, just not something that I I, I can break into. So. Appreciate you guys hanging out and, and watching us today as we diagnosed some issues on the, the Farm All 8. Again, if you guys have any other suggestions, let me know and down in the comments. And uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, give it a like, and uh, hit the bell for, for more videos. So, appreciate it. See you guys later.